41% of all Canadian doctors are women with the same qualifications as their male counterparts, but some of them say they're often met with disbelief, and it's a big problem in our healthcare system. Recently, two Canadian females working in medicine wrote an editorial about this issue. The article, published on healthydebate.ca, says that gender discrimination results in fewer women holding influential positions and encourages wage gaps. Dr. Shannon Ruzicki is the co-chair of the the Medicine Gender Equity Task Force at the University of Calgary's Department of Medicine. Allison Brown is a PhD student in medical education at that university. They both both join me now. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Kelsey. So Shannon, you opened the article with being mistaken for someone other than a doctor. Can you describe the incident to me? Yes, I was a first year internal medicine resident in Calgary and I was seeing a patient overnight. And after speaking with her for an extended period of time, I went to her bedside nurse and I asked the bedside nurse to administer Tylenol. And our bedside nurse said that she had to be seen by a physician before she could receive any medications. And I was confused. I said, what physician are we waiting for? And the nurse told me internal medicine. And I said, well, I'm the internal medicine resident. And the nurse was surprised. She said, oh, I thought you were the patient's friend. And at the time, I was wearing the hospital issue scrubs. I was wearing my white coat that says Dr. Shannon Rizicki. I had a stethoscope on. And that was my first experience with being mistaken for a, a non-physician member of the healthcare team. Shannon, you say first experience. So I'm, I'm assuming this has happened to you more than once. I think this is a common experience for all women in medicine and particularly uh, physicians of color to be mistaken for a non-physician member of the healthcare team. We hear about this experience quite often, even just talking about our article with other female physicians. When a patient or another member of the healthcare team mistakes you for a non-physician, they're signaling that men are physicians and women are not. And it adds up over time, it can be quite exhausting for female physicians. Allison, why do you feel that there's this perception that medicine is above sexism? I think um, it goes back to the history of medicine. Traditionally, women were not allowed admission into medical schools, um, but since 1995, more women have been admitted into medical schools, and that trend has persisted since then. Um, and we use the statistic of more women entering medicine as um, a, you know, a sign that gender equality has been achieved in medical schools. But when we look deeper, uh, gender inequality still exists. And just because more women are being admitted into medical schools doesn't mean that women aren't facing barriers throughout their entire training and careers. So, Allison, what do you think needs to happen? I, I mean, we're seeing the numbers of women getting into medical school, but uh, does change need to happen on a, on a different level? Absolutely. Um, sexism and inequality in medicine is not an individual or a group of individuals, um, not the result of them, but it's a systemic and a structural issue. Um, and we need to first and foremost recognize that this is truly a problem in medicine. And then we need to take action to make the medical school and residency process more equitable for individuals and for physicians throughout their careers. We can't just acknowledge that this is problematic and stand by. I don't think medical schools are doing as much as they could be doing to support students. Shannon, what are some other examples of how you've seen sexism in your field? Things that I've heard from my senior female mentors include uh, difficulties with feedbacks. So we know that female physicians, both anecdotally and from scientific evidence, receive poor quality feedback than our male colleagues. We know that promotions are more difficult for female physicians. Mentorship is more difficult to find. Things that I've heard from uh, my female physician colleagues um, it just shows that at every step in medical training and throughout your medical career, you're facing these additional barriers that our male colleagues aren't facing. So Alison, what would you say some tangible advice or steps that we can take to, to change this, to, to see change within, within the industry? What would you suggest? Um, I think we should look at the way that we are evaluating medical students and residents and look for ways to mitigate the way that biases um, exist in the evaluation process, as well as in the ways that we promote and award women 
um, and the way that leadership positions are filled. Right now, only two of Canada's 17 medical schools have a female dean. None of those 17 have a physician of color as a dean. And so we need to make sure that our leadership reflects the diversity in medicine and in the general population. Well, and change starts with conversations like these. So Alison, Shannon, thank you so much for being here today. Thank, thank you. you.